So the first thing that came to my mind was, what are the means of access? And one of the most essential components, at least in the legacy internet technology as it is, is the domain name. Mm -hmm. And the domain name is to the internet mm -hmm. what a frequency, like a radio station or TV station mm -hmm. frequency is to analog broadcasting. And so in order to find the content, one needs to have a domain. Mm -hmm. Not only in terms of defining the content, but also enabling the access mm -hmm. to the content. So what I saw was an opportunity, because the limitation of the domain system to country code .de or you know, .fr or .com, .org or .net was an artificial limitation. It was not a technical limitation. So in 1995, 1996, I read the specifications, I read the RFCs of the domain system on the internet and understood that it was possible, in fact, a technically trivial matter to create instead of .com, .art or .sucks or .media. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I did this. And I set up, uh, first of all, in, in the, my residence, uh, a, a network experimental network with domain servers running domains like .art mm -hmm. and maybe about 30 others. Mm -hmm. This I saw as a huge potential because first of all at that time the domain system became commercialized 1995, 1996 mm -hmm. what was once free to do a domain registration mm -hmm. subsidized by US tax dollars w became a commercial service in which fees were charged. Mm -hmm. So I saw that not only this was a perfect model economically and in terms of enabling access mm -hmm. to non-commercial and cultural content, if top-level domains were established and independently operated. Mm -hmm. Now, because the Internet is unregulated and there is, of course, strong support, especially in this country, and across political boundaries, but especially in the uh, Republican and neoliberal mm -hmm. s uh, spectrum, uh, for free market activity, this seemed to be a perfect opportunity to mm -hmm. use that structure in a very positive way under a corporate strategy. 